Okay, we have to share with us things, the insights about insurance industry, analytics applied to the insurance industry. Let's welcome our first speaker. I'll let Philippe introduce himself. So, so thank you. I would like first to thank uh, Eugene and, and Kai Shin, this is correctly pronounced, uh, to, to give me the opportunity uh, to connect with the uh, data science community in, in Singapore. In AXA, uh, we, we jumped into the data science and in the big data world uh, recently, but we are now very fond of this community and uh, we think that uh, big data will be at the core of our transformation. Um, about my presentation, I will make a brief uh, introduction about AXA and uh, its challenges and then I will move uh, into the main uh, use cases we have and then I will try to do a deep dive on, on one of them which is about four just to give you a flavor about what kind of uh, challenges we could have in data science. Um, just a brief introduction about me. I am the non-technical guy of this, uh, of this session today because Xavier will be the technical one. I am definitely a traditional insurer, so I uh, spent uh, nearly 30 years doing traditional insurance, mainly in property and casualty business, uh, but everything I would say in property and casualty business. And um, then I decided two years ago uh, to, uh, with the, the sponsorship of uh, some senior executive of the group, to create the Data Innovation Lab. So I moved into this data science uh, area two years ago, so I'm still a baby and an old actuary, so it's a nice uh, combination for me. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this area, uh, I have with me some of my colleagues from the DIL. So Tatiana Adakovic, which is always working as a project manager in the DIL in, in Paris, and uh, Anko Amral, who is now the head of the Data Innovation Lab in the GIR. So feel free to uh, to connect with them at the end of this presentation. Um, maybe. If I speak like this, is it okay, or do you prefer the mic? You prefer the mic? Oui, oui. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, have, I have, as often in real life, I have contradict contradictory labels, but okay. So, just a few words about AXA and AXA transformation. So, just to give you a flavor about AXA, AXA is about more than 100 million customers today. Uh, we are uh, on the three uh, main, uh, main activities are about property casualty, about savings, but also asset, asset, uh, asset management. You see that we are uh, uh, all over the world, and I have to say that for Asia, uh, we have a big ambition in order to move uh, uh, and to increase a lot of uh, customer basis. Our official target for 2030 is uh, 100 million customers. So you see that it's uh, a very ambitious target for, for Asia. Um, we are also the first brand in the world, the global brand uh, uh, for insurance and uh, 48 for the global brand in the world. So very well known brand. Uh, of course, the three main source of, uh, of growth for AXA is about relocating and uh, focusing on, on or investment in mature, com mature uh, markets to develop strongly in a uh, high growth market, so especially in Asia. And we think that we need to, uh, to transform ourselves with digital. So I would say if the digital is the car, big data will be the engine, uh, and maybe uh, uh, privacy will be the oil uh, of this. So, um, so it's something which is very important for us. I go very quickly for this. So, uh, we decided in order to uh, speed up and to create a real experience curve in the group to create a central team, which is the Data Innovation Lab. Uh, just a word, so I'm the head of the Data Innovation Lab, but I forgot also to say that I'm the group chief data officer. Uh, and so we decided to create this, uh, this structure to, uh, to first to create uh, assets for the group, so platform, data tools, uh, full make or buy process. Uh, we also uh, support entities in a dedicated project with a, a dedicated uh, data science team. And we are still looking at new technologies that we could use in uh, the insurance area to, uh, 
to improve the way we work. Uh, I, I try to develop a culture in the data innovation area which is a bit specific compared to the traditional insurance culture. So in order to be able to take risk, we try to fail fast and to have a, pro a specific project life cycle. So we do POC, project proof of concept. We try to, to do it in a short uh, period of time. And so is the first point. The second point, we try to learn, I would say, iteratively. And uh, as I say very often, we, we try to think big but start small. Because uh, there's no way to have uh, two big projects at the beginning and you need to be able to, be able to, uh, to, uh, to quickly learn and to pilot. The, the, the third point is that we try to uh, go on the, to think about uh, the, the customer, the user, so we are very keen of user experience. We are also trying to reduce time to market, so we, we develop a giant methodology, and uh, so it means also a lot of rigor and a way to manage the project differently. And the fourth point is about entrepreneurial spirit, so we are always linked to the business, and we are accountable, we try to develop the accountability and the autonomy of the team, so we create dedicated team for each project, we call them feature team. Okay, this, these are the four, I would say, uh, main principles. About the, the data innovation lab, actually it changes every day, so today we are more than 60 in, uh, in Paris. We will be more about uh, 15 in, in Asia, as so, soon as possible. So we are recruiting. Uh, we have uh, so we are, have uh, three uh, uh, locations. One is in near Paris, the other is in Singapore in the AXA Tower, and the third one in Bangalore. Um, the people we have are coming from different, uh, uh, I would say, uh, countries and uh, different profiles. We have data scientists, data engineer, uh, designer. Legal people also, because we need to, uh, to work on the legal issues which uh, are uh, critical for our job. Uh, we have project managers and, uh, and me, which is a profile a bit different from everything. Uh, and we also work on a lot of projects, as you see. Uh, we already uh, have a, a lot of opportunities under review and we, we started 30 projects, uh, mainly in four domains, and I will come back to this after. Um, just the last word about the people we recruit, we try to recruit people with strong expertise and passionate. And I, I'm very fond of finding the passionate people, really uh, fond of data, really fond of working with the business and being uh, really uh, business focused also. Uh, about the areas of focus of the DL, we have three of them for the business. The first one is about connected devices because we believe that connected devices uh, could disrupt the insurance industry. It's also a way to interact with our customers differently, to provide new services and to understand the risk differently. So this, are, this is the first area. Uh, of course, we started as a, I would say, traditionally for insurer with a connected car, but we are moving also in the connected home and the connected health area. The second area is about predictive behavior modeling. At AXA, we want to be customer-centric. We want to understand the customer, so to predict uh, uh, the best way to serve it, to uh, cross-sell, upsell, also to uh, prevent churn, but also trying to, for digital footprint, to understand the risk better. So this is the second area. The third area is about, is more industry-specific, and it's about, uh, I would say, risk management, advanced analytics, so it's about using, in a better way, uh, the, I would say, uh, insurance data. So exposure, claims, to better price, uh, to uh, better uh, fight against fraud, to optimize claims, to do predictive underwriting. That could be uh, some uh, use cases. And of course, we are also working on platform, but this is not about business. So just a, a, a flavor about what we, we, we work on. We work on acquisition, so targeting, uh, lead, lead, uh, lead priorization, uh, marketing optimization, 
Uh, we work also on customer 360, so connected the dots to give uh, some uh, uh, new possibility to the people to, to connect with uh, customers, to do uh, a lot of use cases like uh, churn upside also. We work on, on the claims cost uh, uh, optimization, so uh, to uh, uh, maximize uh, the orientation rate, to optimize the network of our repair shop, uh, to uh, make some automatic uh, assessment. We, we work a bit less actually today because it's still an actuarial uh, area on pricing for uh, some uh, uh, complex interaction uh, uh, variable uh, uh, discovery and also on the, uh, I would say, uh, zoning and uh, vehicle classification, for instance, which is very often a very high dimensional uh, issues. So where you could, uh, machine learning could bring a lot and where data science techniques could help us to uh, to avoid some uh, autocorrelation issues and uh, uh, over some overfitting issues. And then, as I say, we work also on telematics, where we have uh, um, a big platform that has been developed internally in my team, and we uh, work uh, both on the providing uh, the platform, but also on the working on feature engineering to develop a specific uh, score for driving behavior. Uh, and we work also on health and connected, but it's less mature today. Just to finish about the data innovation lab, as I say, we are in uh, Bangalore, in Singapore, it's new, and uh, in Paris, but we have three platforms. We are still on premises, but it will change in the near future. So our three platforms are in Atlanta, in, uh, in uh, Paris, actually near Paris, and in Singapore. So three continental platform that are uh, Adobe based and uh, with, with a full stack uh, to, uh, to work uh, and to... Uh, so we have a production platform and an exploration platform, uh, a test and node platform. And we also install some uh, non-distributed platform to, uh, to, uh, for the data scientists. Just to give you a flavor about the uh, innovation ecosystem of AXA, uh, we have also, we work also closely with ASA Strategic Venture, which is a venture capitalist inside AXA, who is, uh, which is investing in, uh, in uh, financial, in fintech. We also work with Kamet, which is a startup incubator, which is located in Paris, and we, which is looking for uh, disruptive ideas for insurance, so they try to kill us, actually to kill the way the traditional insurance. Um, we have also uh, some connection with AXALAB, which is in uh, Shanghai and San Francisco. So AXALAB is doing scooting. They try to find new partners, uh, new innovative startups in the Silicon Valley world or in the, in the Asia, Asian world. We work also with uh, the digital agency which is dedicated to develop mobile app and interface for user, and also with uh, the engineering lab in Lausanne, which is working with the PFL to uh, develop new infrastructure for, uh, for IT. So this is a complete, I would say, uh, environment uh, for us. Just a word to say that for us, Big Data is about business, and it's about also a strategic move. So my, I would say my biggest sponsor is, uh, is Henri Decasse, which is uh, good and sometimes gives me some pressure. But uh, I think we, we need always to think about this. And, and if I sum up, we have three areas. We try to, thanks to Big Data, to be better in doing our job, so it's about excellence, to create new relationships with our customer, so moving from product to services and new interaction, because you know that Insurance is not a transactional business, which is an issue where you try to, to understand your customer and to develop services. And we try also, it's something which is important for us, to, be, uh, to create exemplarity. So it started with the privacy and ethics, which is a big, big issue, and I want to emphasize on the fact that, as often I say, the only failure we have was because we didn't solve the privacy issue in some countries. It's the only point where you could be plot up to the, uh, and don't, uh, and not able to move at all. So privacy is a big issue, cross-border regulation is a big issue for us, 
and we try to be as compliant and as ethic as possible. But we try also to give back the data for uh, analysis for health, for instance, chronical disease, or for uh, road safety. So it's something, also something we try to develop, which is data for good. How much? It's okay. So I, I just give you a flavor about what are the main issues we, we, we face in, uh, in the insurance industry. I think some of them are quite common to uh, other industries, some of them are maybe specific. So if I take the, the first idea is about uh, saying that we are working in, in uh, several dimensions. The first one is that we have observation. And I would say in AXA, even if we have 100 million customers, it will not create big data environment because it's not so big. But the point is that we, we will uh, we'll have a, an increase actually of, uh, of this uh, number because when we go into the connected devices world, for instance, we will collect information every second, we will collect more and more information, and uh, it becomes more and more important. The second area is about dimension. We collect more and more, I would say, features about our customers through weblog and so on. And it's actually, for me, big data is more about the columns and about the rules. You understand? Because it's inflating and it creates some, uh, some issues. I will come back to this after. And we have also action. In, uh, I would say in the statistical theory, it would be treatment. So treatment, we have a lot of them. So it could be with a car repair shop, it could be with agents. So you could have a, a lot of, of this. So this is the big data cube. It's not about the, uh, the observation only. It's about this dimension. And if we go there, we have also the labels. And I will come back to this because it's a, it's a big issue for us sometimes. So on the first one, I have to say that very often the data are yes because you, you, you have some uh, sampling issue. Uh, you have redundancy, which is a big issue in a lot of industries, especially in insurance. We always need to do deduplication, always. For the customer ID, for the car repair shop uh, label and so on, it's always a big part of the job. Uh, is to do it. Growing volume is because we are moving into the, 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 the connected devices world. Real time become a, uh, we become a challenge because we try to capture the data in a, in a streaming process. We are not very good in metadata management, which is a big issue when you are uh, working on some areas and to timestamp, for instance, is not always good. And uh, so we need to, uh, and with my CDO role is something I, I really uh, uh, take care of. About this one, the D dimension, one of the strategic issues for us is of course to get access to the data. I would say that my main competitor maybe in the future will be Apple, Google, and so on. And so how to get access to data of my customers, data quality is still a pending challenge. We have still some format issue, we still have missing data, we still have noise. It's, uh, so it's something where we need clearly to improve ourselves. Uh, we don't have always all the information for a long period. We have a lot of infrastructure data, so we need to be able to leverage this because we have more and more call center. We have a lot of text. We have also even a paper file for, uh, for some complex uh, for instance, claims, so we need to, to work on this. Of course, we, we face, which, which is very common when we go for uh, 100, 200, uh, um, uh, feature, we have this uh, dimensionality problem to solve uh, and generalization challenge, which is of course a big issue. We have also culinary issue because we have a vari variables which are uh, strongly correlated. On the action, we have the very classical issue about the fact that uh, you could have only one treatment. For instance, if you look at uh, a repair shop, how do you manage to understand what is really the noise part and what is really the, the part that is linked to the, the quality of the repair shop when you do normalization. It's very, very complex because you are not able to, 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 to ask to a claim to be treated by one car repair shop and then by another one. So it's always a, a classical issue of inference you have to, to manage. Very often you have no randomized treatment, meaning that for instance you will see in, uh, in fraud, they will be selected on but in a way, so you can apply the traditional uh, model, 
uh, interpretability is a key issue because very often we need to give the information and in what we receive to uh, someone, so we need to, to make a right trade-off between uh, accuracy and interpretability. The reality, I put this word because when we work, for instance, on the, on the targeting, you will give some score or some information to a tide agent or a broker. You don't know exactly what you will do with it sometimes. So you're not sure about what is your action. So when you try to do the monitor of your score or this kind of thing, it's a bit tricky. So you, do, you need to develop, a, a, I would say, a, a, a testing and this kind of thing because it's not easy to, to understand. And of course, we have always some issues about what is really due to our model, what is really due to all the things. And of course, we need to distinguish between uh, the, the correlation and between the real causation and causality. And we need also to understand what is really impactful and so to look for true lift. As I say very often, we don't try to become the best predictor, we try to find the right action to influence people which is a bit different in terms of uh, prediction. And this one, which is an issue, very often we don't have all uh, its PS because for instance, and we will see in fraud, we don't actually uh, make a treatment for every claim, so we don't have all the labels. Very often it's a rare event, because in insurance it's often the case, uh, so it's imbalanced and sometimes it's noisy because it's not correctly treated. So it could really big, uh, give you a kind of a big issue when you try to do supervised learning. So fraud project. Deep dive, but sorry guy, if you ask me a very technical question about coding and this kind of thing, I will, I will, uh, I will give the mic to, to Xavier if he could answer. Uh, fraud, you know what it is. Huh? It's about uh, uh, omission uh, uh, for, uh, to deceive company to get financial advantage. We have also waste and abuse. Uh, I will uh, focus on fraud. I, of course, sanitize this because there is some big figures. Just to give you an insight about the, 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 the um, rational, business rational. You see the detection of fraud for, actually it's a real, real graph with no numbers. But fraud detection is very wide inside AXA for detection and it's not only linked to the uh, country uh, specificities. And you see that it could be a big amount, could be a big amount because we talk about several million and sometimes hundreds of millions of euros. And uh, so even if we are able to move to the lower bound of experiment, it could be a big amount for AXA. So it's a big challenge for us. Big, big challenge. And as often as I say, fraud, the good customers deserve a good fraud fighting. Because uh, insurance is about mutuality and you are, you are, it's not good that you pay for the bad, uh, the bad customers. So it's uh, also a way, a way to be customer centric if you do it co uh, properly. What we try to do is to develop a software to detect fraud. You have also external software. This is not the best one necessary today, but it's a bit different, I will, I will tell you why. Uh, we, of course, try to stick to business needs, so it's the only way to, uh, to get, uh, to really uh, achieve our goals. We don't try to just give a uh, uh, score. It's about software, about transforming the operational processes. So you will see in the, the next slide that we, our mission is big, bigger than giving uh, a score. Uh, we will, of course, use advanced analytics. It's also why we are in the, at the book level. And we will try to change the process thanks to the data. And of course, to really be, uh, create a real benefit for Alexa and to be able to transform it, try to, to create a replicable tool in order to use it in, uh, in other entities. So just to give you a flavor, you have several possibility to fraud. I don't want to uh, elaborate too much, not to give you bad ideas, but it could be uh, imagination of roster is uh, without a limit as often, because we have other which are very funny. Uh, even some people like in Korea that, uh, that run around the car and, uh, and, and, and create uh, real claims, but uh, control claim, I would say, but you have a lot of ways to, to, uh, to, uh, to fraud insurance. 
So the, the purpose of our tool is to raise electronic alerts and also help investigators to, uh, to work on the most suspicious, suspicious claims, so to reduce uh, false positive. <coughs> Uh, as you may know, uh, the way it works is that you have referrals that will be given, uh, that will uh, that will be given, and uh, you have flag claims that will uh, looked by uh, by people and then send if we believe that is uh, suspicious to investigator. The only way to uh, to uh, to find uh, to uh, to get uh, money from fraud is to prove the fraud. So you need to have an investigator at the end. It's not a machine. It's a human guy that will investigate and find a way not to pay the fraudulent claims. So it's it's become tricky because very often the investigator, the, spe the special uh, investigator unit cannot handle more than one to five percent of the claim of, uh, of a company. So you need to be very effective and to give them the really the right one in order to avoid spend much too much time on the on the on non fraud uh, fraud claim. And of course you have each for each step you have some uh, challenges on all on the infrastructure, on analytics and on the organization. What we we did uh, for the, we, we did this project for Korea, Japan, and Turkey. And what we did on this is, of course, we ingest and clean and integrate the data. First of all, we work on our data lake. Uh, we have uh, so in, uh, in, in uh, Singapore, for instance, or in, in Paris. We use also some uh, tools we develop, which is a data ingestion and cleaning tool. And we work a lot with uh, the local people to extract the data. Very often we don't have data, data dictionaries, so we need to work with them a lot to, uh, to do this the job. And uh, we need to instantiate our tool to parameterize it to uh, really clean the data in the proper way. When we work on the, on, the, on the model, we work also closely with the people, with the business people, to do the feature engineering and to develop the model. Then we test the model on the, we made back testing, but you will see that back testing is not enough. Then we move very quickly to launch a pilot in live test to estimate the benefit and to try to learn and to improve the model. You will see that back testing is, uh, is clearly based in, uh, in fraud for different reasons. Just to give you a, a high level architecture, we, we try to develop three levels. The first one is a data uh, infrastructure where we use uh, different tools to... Uh, to uh, so we have parallel connectors to feed uh, our data lake. We, we try to uh, also uh, use external data to only them to use different services. And then we move into uh, the part when we will work on the, I would say, a statistical module, feature engineering, uh, advanced cleaning, and then the last one is about uh, operational processes. So we will develop some tools that will help the, uh, in the claim sender to, to, to select the claim, so a triage tool, and we also work on exploration tool and investigation tool. So you know it's a full approach. It's not only giving a, a statistic, statistical score, it's really to change the way they are doing their business. And we do the same actually for claims optimization. And, uh, so let me tell you what we, we, we do in, uh, in fraud. We use external data. We do standard machine learning. We also work on network exploration, meaning that some claims, some uh, fraud, you will find them by uh, looking at graph and not looking at only the information within the claim. We will do in supervised learning and they will explain why. We are doing text mining because uh, we work also with the information uh, given by the claim sender sometime in text. And we also work more and more with speech analytics because in some countries like Turkey we have a, a claim center that uh, work to settle the claim. So we need all these uh, capabilities. And as I said before, there is a big issue in fraud. Let's say a fraud is about 5%. So first of all, it's a rare event. But the second, the second point is that also you, you will have, uh, I would say, 90, 98, 97% of the claims that will not be really labeled. 
because as I said before, only 3% will be investigated. So if you are really rigorous, false, false negative and false positive are not known. Okay? This is a big issue. Meaning that, in fact, everything is biased because uh, your, your, you are on the label, the label one are only very specific. And uh, also, as I say, the target is very imbalanced because you have, even if you are able to find the fraud, you have 5% which will be true and 95% which will be false. And so it means that you need to be very careful about the metrics you use because it's very imbalanced. So, but the, the major issue is that, in fact, a lot, uh, most of the cases are not labeled. So it's a, it's a tricky issue for, of course, on this case. So the first data flow we used was very simple. It's to take the business rule and to uh, do a logistic regression in order to, to see if it's better. And uh, so the, you see the, the kind of uh, rules that you could have, which are transformed into Boolean. And then you, you do a first re a logistic regression in order to see if you could be a bit better than the naive uh, approach that could be a, a, a detection when you have at least one rule which applies. And actually it works. And it gives a, a good lead for... Uh, so we put in one person because as I said before, very often we are limited by the capability of uh, the, the specific, the special uh, investigation unit. And so it was better than the naive rule classification. But the problem, is that it was very bad, or it's nearly like the random approach for the, uh, the label uh, claim. Because uh, the distribution of the label claim is quite different from the distribution of the total uh, data. So the, the other pro approach was to use uh, a predictive modeling approach. So I forgot to mention the fact that in each of these approach we decided to use a very strong assumption, which is that the uh, non labeled claims could be uh, considered as false, as non fraudulent, which is a strong assumption. And then we, we move on this and we go through these different uh, uh, ensemble uh, uh, random forest and uh, decision tree, and uh, with the cleaning approach and so on. So you will see the training set was about 50%. We use only a penalization, which is a, a simple one, which is not the square, which is a, a just a, a, the value of the, of, the, of the parameters. And uh, on this one, Randolph Forest was the best, with the clear winner. The leaf was better, but we still have this problem with the, with the, the, the label sample. And, uh, just to give you an idea about what kind of data we use, for instance, on the, on the speech, we use this kind of information, which is our features that we have been developed with our, uh, we, we use a provider on this one. So we also use this kind of uh, information, which came from non-structural information. Um, then we decided to use an hybrid approach, using at the same time the information from the business rules, which are straightforward and simple and easily understandable, and then also the uh, hierarchical model. And so we first do the, the, two, uh, the two branches, and then we uh, gather them with the logistic regression that will allow us also to uh, better interpretability. So this one was better, clearly. Uh, and the, the random forest score in the, the regression logistic was better and we use this kind of information. It was not perfect, to be honest. It's still a problem with the label data, but it was better and according to which country it's, it's uh, even better in some countries than in others. And we use this kind of information, as I said, you know, the rules, influencing score, the features that we use are very classical, actually, and so also we use speech, as I said. So, we use this hybrid approach. It was the approach we decided to use. So, what is nice is that at the same time we have the classical patterns we could give interpretability, but we also discover other patterns. And we could also, it's easier to maintain uh, with uh, machine learning, because the problem with rules is that you have uh, 
I don't see if you remember the number, we have uh, maybe 1,000 rules in, uh, in Japan, and y you have to maintain them. So it's, uh, it's a big issue. Machine learning is, even, is simpler, and it's also more dynamic. Give you opportunity to find new patterns. What we, we do also is starting to work on network, network detection. I will not have time to discuss about this one, which is very technical and computational intensive. Just to give you uh, a view about what we did for interpretability, which is rather common. So we, we, we look at the contribution for each uh, branch of the, of the tree in order to be able to give information about why we selected this, uh, this claim to the investigator. So we always need to find a way to give him some information about uh, the selection. We also developed uh, an approach to, uh, to automate uh, the, the, the processes and to learn from, from it in order to be able to, uh, to have a, a complete cycle. So you see, uh, we, we have a notification of loss all the claims go through uh, this, uh, this machine learning and uh, uh, business role uh, approach. We give the suspicious alert to the claims handler. It will look at it and give them information to, uh, to uh, if it confirms the, the suspiciousness and give inform the, the claims to the spe specific uh, investigator unit. And so they work on it like this. And uh, what is nice with this approach is that we increase the capability of uh, this unit because we give them less uh, false positive and uh, more probability to, to find the claim. Uh, you see that uh, we work on the, of course, on backtesting, but we go really on live evolution very quickly because of all the problem I mentioned about the, the backtesting. Uh, you see what we, we, we did, we, we, we detect faster the fraud. We, we also put in place some uh, KPI, of course, to see uh, uh, what are the, the main uh, driver of uh, the savings. So you see decrease in investigation cost, increase in both savings rate because uh, the, the conversion rate will increase and the referral rate will increase. Of course, all the things you see here, our operational impact are very important to create this uh, efficiency. And reliability on the front with automatic reporting, Faster claim triage that is given by the tool. Uh, we have to change the processes to uh, to uh, to be really uh, to grasp really this uh, new approach. And uh, claims handler need to really be reactive and also to change their mind to be ready to work with this kind of tool. And uh, and uh, that's it. So to give you a flavor, it's not it's not. Fantastic in, in Japan because uh, the fraud rate was very low at the beginning. So we still we still work with their data. So it's, uh, you learn from their data. So you have some limitation. Uh, what we see is that we the, the lift was really better with uh, with our model uh, at one percent. Uh, we also see that we have a, a clear uh, precision uh, gain uh, with this tool, which is still low actually uh, because it's about ten percent. So it means that 90% is still uh, false positive. So it's a, it's a problem, but I, as I say, we start with very low uh, rate in, in Japan, and it's not the same in all other countries. Very nice uh, picture just to show you that we, we work also in graph to work on the, on the um, network, from network. So we try to propagate the information when you have a fraudulent claim, if you have a claim which is linked with all uh, several fraudulent claims, it gave you some, uh, some insight about the fact that this claim could be fraudulent, even if you don't find anything with the uh, uh, individual information. So this one is also very interesting and very important for us. So, network detection, we work also in real time for the, the, the people who are on the, on the on the platform uh, to, uh, to, to score on the fly and be able to give them some, uh, some information to change uh, the, the interview with the, with the customer. Uh, we give them some tools to, uh, to, uh, to use um, uh, the, to, to optimize the, the investigation. We have all this stuff which is linked to the software model. I, I 
clearly think that it's uh, something that we need to be internalized for a part because it's really linked with uh, our business. It's a core for us. And as I say, we, we will learn also from our data. And so I think it's uh, better to learn ourselves and to uh, give this to other people. But of course, we, will, uh, we also uh, try to, uh, to benchmark ourselves with uh, external information. Uh, I will not have time to go through this because it's uh, the screenshot to show you what is, uh, what is the kind of tool we use. Uh, I really want to finish with uh, one slide. Uh, let me, I have to do a, a manipulation. Just to move. It's a very, a very visual one. So, just to give you, at the conclusion, my, my thoughts about the, the challenges we face in an insurance company when we work on this uh, big data area. The first one is about business. It's not about data, it's not about technology. Because when you want to really create a real impact with big data, you need to, ch to onboard the business they need to change the way they work, they need to change their mindset, they need to change their capability and their organization. This is the first topic, which is a big one. When I say you need to change your business, for instance, if you don't have the information uh, uh, captured or collected by the distributor, if you want really to become data driven, you need to get this information. This is not something easy. It will change the way you need to negotiate with your distributor, you need to work on this. So it's really a big change. The second point is about data management. It's, no, it's not very useful or not very, uh, thank you, it's not very uh, logical to do very complex model when you have very bad data, when you have uh, very uh, few data. And so uh, we discovered that in some places we need to really work more on the data management, feature engineering, before developing very complex machine learning models. And so data management is a, is a big issue for me. As I said before, quality is a big issue. Uh, label and so on is a big issue. Tracking uh, information is a big issue. And uh, in some countries, we, we saw the difference between uh, countries which are data readiness and data ready and the other. And the quality of the model we use is quite different. The first one is about really uh, moving into, a, uh, into big data and uh, being able to transform the business through platform. Meaning that we need to go uh, beyond the analytics and develop collaborative platform in order for the people to be able to transform their business to develop use cases. So it's my uh, daisy uh, 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 strategy is to say we will develop the data management platform, we will develop the repository, the data uh, repository and so on. We will develop maybe the first tool or framework and then entity needs to develop their use cases need to develop uh, the way to leverage their data and create the, the whole flow. So it's about business, it's about data management, and then it's about a collaborative platform and to develop this business. And of course, for this we need data scientists, we need uh, technology, but I want to say that the challenges is far beyond. So it will not be only data scientists that will change the world. Sorry for that guy. But it needs a, a kind of collaborative approach with uh, the business, with uh, a cross-disciplinary approach. So this is my uh, end sentence. Thank you. And uh, I will be happy to answer to your question. I think we have time for one or two questions while the video sets up. Max? You are. You offer insurance across a lot of different fields. I'm wondering uh, what field is it easiest to detect fraud and, and which field is it most difficult? For fraud only or for? Oh, for fraud, yeah. For Detect fraud. Fraud detection. Fraud detection, I would say, is linked also to the dimensionality problem. So, for instance, 
uh, you have very uh, a similar kind of fraud for elephants, and which says, seems to be a bit more difficult for us to take up because you have a very different uh, approach. Uh, for and you have also uh, um, the way you are working on fraud on elf is a bit different because sometimes you have uh, I don't remember the, the right word, but you over is not really fraud, but sometimes it's uh, mis. Uh, no, Miss Billing, I don't remember the name, yes. Okay, so fraud could be, from my experience, but we are, I just remind that we are young in this area, so I, I stay in Bull, but today it's easier to work on the on motor, and also maybe because since unsupervised learning is always difficult, uh, we have more information, more levels in motor. For instance, in Elf, for instance, we started with a big company in the group, but there are very, very few detected fraud, so it was very hard for us. So we developed an unsupervised approach, but for a specific kind of fraud, and it appears that it was a very a tiny part of the fraud uh, in, in this uh, country. So I would say that definitely PNC seems to be easier at the beginning. But uh, I may be wrong. I know I maybe the experience will show us that we could uh, take a little differently. But I would say, from my experience, uh, in uh, and we where we have more data actually. Okay. Um. Thank you. I, I think maybe we can uh, Philip and the team from Alta will be around after. So please feel free to respond to your questions. Um.